The Amazon, the second longest river in the world, second only to the Nile in Africa. Some say when all its tributaries are fully mapped, it will be proven to be the longest river in the world. The water is a muddy brown. Some people describe it as coffee with milk. The flow of the river at the mouth is at the speed of seven knots, about eight miles per hour. This means the ship traveling upriver has to go seven knots just to stand still. The Amazon outflow is 12 times greater than the Mississippi. It flows into the ocean about 200 miles before it mixes with the Atlantic. Early navigators passing along the coast of Brazil were surprised to see not only the brown colored water, but they found fresh water in the ocean at a point where land could not be seen. This is how the Amazon was discovered. 2,000 kinds of fish live in the Amazon, as well as freshwater dolphins and the anaconda, the largest snake in the world. Ocean-going ships traverse it 994 miles to the inland city of Manaus, making it the longest navigable natural waterway in the world. Here is our ship, the Royal Princess, 1,200 passengers plus crew. When we entered the Amazon outflow about 3 o'clock in the morning, the captain reported the clearance between the bottom of the hull and the ocean floor was less than 10 feet. Silt from the river is deposited on the ocean floor at the outer perimeter of the outflow. This is called the Amazon Bar, a submerged sandbar. Here is Santarem, sometimes pronounced Santarem, one of the ports we come to as we journey up the Amazon. The shuttle buses are waiting for us dockside. They will take us through the town and bring us to this quaint shopping area on the river. It is hot and humid, but a slight breeze off the river makes the browsing and shopping experience pleasant. This caught my eye, a parrot phone booth, or hyacinth macaw phone booth to those familiar with the species. I don't think you'll find one of these in the States. Look at this smiling creature, a piranha, or as they pronounce it here, a piranha. Those teeth could cause a lot of damage real fast. Actually, the piranha has gotten a bad rap. There are over 20 species of piranha, and of them, all but one are vegetarians existing on river plants. And that one, the carnivorous variety with the sharp teeth, lives in the upper tributaries of the Amazon. We were warned aboard ship to be careful when we buy souvenirs. The piranha is an endangered species, and the stuffed ones cannot be brought back to the States. They will be confiscated by customs. Also, the native blowguns that are readily available are not allowed. We leave Santorum behind as our ship makes its way upriver. Along the river we see small farms, an occasional village, but mostly rainforest. Sometimes we see a riverboat. These are the water taxis that take people between the ports. We come upon the village of Boca de Valeria at the confluence of the Rio de Valeria and the Amazon. This is a small village of about 75 people where the people live under primitive conditions, but they welcome the tourists and the tourist dollars. Locals from the area come over to the ship in their canoes, trying to sell their handicrafts to the passengers. At this point, they have few takers. These tourists have hired the boatman for a canoe ride. You can see the huts are on stilts. This is because of the rising waters of the river and also to keep away the roaming creatures of the night.
As we arrive, we find the locals have stands set up near the tender docks to sell their crafts. This man has a big fish at his stand. Not for sale, just for pictures. The locals are friendly and they are as interested in seeing us as we are of seeing them. The English of the locals is limited, but they know the words one dollar. They would like us to pay them to take their pictures or pictures of their homes, their parrot, or whatever creature they happen to be holding at the time. This man has a beautiful toucan, a bird native to the area. Wow, beautiful. Go ahead and sit by him. Note the woman center of the screen in the primitive costume. This is not the regular attire. She is dressed this way for the tourist pictures and dollars. This hut has cold drinks for sale for the tourists. It is powered by a generator that can be heard running in back. It is probably the only electric power available in the village. The visitors taking the canoe ride have returned, and it's time for us to leave Boca de Valeria. As we return to the ship, we see the locals in their canoes still around the ship looking for the visitors to buy their crafts. We are told these people are from a nearby village, and the people of Boca de Valeria will not let them in their village. Traveling further upriver, we come to the town of Perintanes. We will not be stopping here, as nightfall is coming and we are scheduled to be in Manaus by morning. Here we are at Manaus, a city of a million and a half people. It was built with rubber money, so to speak, at a time when rubber was king and this area of Brazil supplied the world. It all collapsed when rubber tree seeds were smuggled out of Brazil and brought to Indonesia. Here is the Manaus Opera House. It was built in the 19th century with rubber money during the boom. Caruso once performed here. There was an orchestra practicing while we were here. Time to explore the rainforest. We will be boarding one of these river boats, which will take us to a dock on the edge of the rainforest, where we will board ten-person powered canoes. But there's a problem. There are not enough gangways for all the river boats, so the dock workers have to move them from boat to boat. Here comes the gangway so we can board. The river at Manaus is two miles wide. There is considerable boat traffic here and these floating gas stations seem to thrive. Small boats are mainly seen on the Manaus waterfront. Our ship is one of the larger vessels they see. We are told 40 cruise ships came up the Amazon to Manaus last year, but most came from Europe. The trip across the river to the rainforest is pleasant and scenic. Manaus is hot and humid with temperatures in the 90s. The breeze on the river makes the experience tolerable. We pass small farms and houses of the river people. These are the suburbs of Manaus. We are arriving at the dock where we will board the smaller boats. This outpost is at the edge of the rainforest. The attendants are helpful and courteous. The canoes are small but comfortable. And off we go. We will be traveling the canals and waterways of the rainforest.
Before we get there, more locals in a canoe greet us. They are holding their pet creatures of the area. This boy has a caiman, an alligator-like reptile. The next boy has a boar constrictor. It is not the anaconda you hear about in the region. We haven't seen any of them. Time for us to leave. We have to stay on schedule. This tour reminds me of the Florida Everglades, but the flora and fauna are much different. It also reminds me of the Jungle Cruise ride at Walt Disney World. Up in the tree, just right of center screen, that's a wild toucan. And there he flies off. Even in the rainforest, we see an occasional house or shack but they are few and far between. This area is part of the world's largest tropical rainforest. Pristine wilderness for many, many miles, and all this just a few miles from the big city, Manaus. The waterways have floating logs, plants, and debris, but our driver is able to maneuver around them. The rainforest isolates Manaus from the rest of Brazil to the south. There are no roads running through the rainforest. There have been attempts to build a road to connect the southern Brazilian cities, but the rainforest always wins. The rapid growth of the lush vegetation has made road construction impossible. We are returning to the outpost where we started. Next we go to Lake January and the Victoria Regia water lilies and their large lily pads. The path to Lake January is over this boardwalk above the floor of the rainforest. Here we have a termite nest in the tree. The termites built the nest high enough to protect it from the ground roaming animals that might be looking for an insect snack. At the end of the boardwalk, we come to an observation platform overlooking a quiet pool, Lake January. This is where the Victoria Regia water lilies are. Around the large lily pads are caiman, a reptilian relative of the alligator and the crocodile. 
The lily pads grow four to five feet in diameter. Some of the smaller caiman are sunning themselves on the lily pads. The lilies themselves are relatively small compared to the large lily pads. These water lilies are native to the Amazon and other South American rivers. They only grow in areas like this where the water is still with no current. We now must return to the riverboat for the next part of our journey, the meeting of the waters. As we return, we find the river people around the boat waiting for us, selling their crafts, displaying their pets, or wanting us to pay them to take their picture. With no takers, the boat departs, leaving this part of the rainforest behind. We say goodbye to the other visitors waiting for their boat as we head to the meeting of the waters. This is where the waters of two rivers come together, the Rio Negro and the Rio Solimos. They come together to form the Amazon. The Rio Negro and its tributaries flow through a lot of vegetation, picking up tannin, causing the water to be black. The Rio Solimos, on the other hand, flows through much mud and silt, causing its water to be brown. The waters come together here, but they do not mix until many miles down river. The result, two different colored waters running side by side. The meeting of the waters is a unique sight. <laughs>